wanted to talk about uh, some of the different trading vehicles that we use in our trading room. Uh, and, and those are primarily the SPX, but also the SPY and the E-minis, the futures contract. And, you know, just as everything in life has a pro and a con, there's really nothing that is a panacea, which is all upside and no downside. It's absolutely true in trading. And uh, so often uh, something gets painted in a bad light or a bad way. And the E-minis are one of those uh, for our traders in our live trading room. You know, the challenge, of course, with zero data expiration trading is that if you are trading below $25,000 account values, you have uh, PDT rules that you have to follow, pattern day trading rules that state if you're trading more than three or four day trades in a five day period, you're going to get a restriction on your account. They're going to lock up your account for 90 days and you're only going to be allowed to close positions and not open new positions. Basically, they freeze your account. And there's a few ways around that, but the simplest, most straightforward way around that, if you're trading less than $25,000, and I think that uh, approximately a 30% of our traders in our live trading room uh, are in that position, you are stuck with trading the E-minis. And there's probably more benefits, I would say, than uh, cons to trading the futures. I think that there's tremendous benefits that the futures can bring to us as a trading vehicle. But of course, the big thing that we always think about and that sticks with us is the horrible, horrible commissions. And they are. They can be three to four times, 300% to 400% more uh, on the futures than they are on the uh, equities, the, the SPY or the SPX. And, and, and because of that, they get a bad rap. But I will just say that I love the E-minis. I trade them all of the time. And first and foremost, one of the reasons that I love them is because they, uh, as the futures contracts obviously imply, they trade uh, in the uh, outside of the cash markets. They trade pre-market and post-market when the cash markets are closed. And if you want to take advantage of a little bit of extra theta decay or you want to take advantage of price movements outside of the cash market hours, ah, there's really no other way to do it other than the futures contract. And so, yeah, there is a lot of commissions uh, on them. And we're going to look at that here in this particular trade. Uh, and see if it justifies it. Because this is a trade that I don't believe I would have been able to take advantage of otherwise, right? Uh, and so um, we'll, we're just going to look at that. It's like a lot like taxes. You know, you're going to pay 30% of your money that you earn back to the government in the form of taxes. Uh, could be more, could be less, depending on where you live in the world. But there is such a focus sometimes on avoid, avoiding taxation people will literally go out of the way to not earn money because they don't want to pay the taxes on that money. Remember, you know, you're throwing away 70 cents uh, to be able to avoid a 30 cent tax. And that's sort of the message I want to make here with the E-minis is that, yeah, the commissions are onerous. The commissions are horrible. There's just no two ways around it. But maybe, they, maybe they're justified if it gives you an opportunity to trade something that you haven't otherwise been able to trade. And so the trade that I want to look at right here uh, are these two trades right here. Um, these are uh, trades that I just put on here today. Today is uh, today's Thanksgiving. It's the uh, November 26th, 2020. It's a Thursday. And uh, I trade in the mountain time zone. And so for me, futures open up at uh, around 4 p.m. for that next trading session. This was just into the open here of the futures. Uh, and I was able to put in a call leg here. Uh, and then a little bit later, about an hour later, I put in uh, a corresponding, same number of contracts here, put in a corresponding one on the put side. The numbers of the trade are right here. You can see here's my E-mini trade. Uh, put about, about $35,000 uh, to do the transaction and brought in $6,000 of credit. Uh, not crazy deltas on this trade. Not, not necessarily crazy deltas on this trade. Let me move that out. And uh, let's go look at these. This is the November 27th expiration. It's a, it's a one-day trade. They, they uh, expire tomorrow. Uh, 10 delta on the puts and a 14 delta on the calls. So a little bit of a skew to the downside. I do believe that there is more downside pressure here uh, than upside pressure. But I wanted to take advantage. And again, uh, this is not a video necessarily to get into um, the thought process behind how I structured this trade. This is more about just the advantages of why you do want to have the ability to trade futures in your account. 
Uh, but anyway, I did just so that you understand a little bit, did have a little bit of a downward bias here. Obviously, tomorrow, Friday in the marketplace, uh, one day after Thanksgiving, it's one of the lightest trading days um, in uh, the entire year worth of trading. Anytime you get one of those trading days where we have a holiday uh, or a market close on a Thursday, that next preceding Friday, uh, generally speaking, very, very light volume because people will utilize that to make a three-day weekend out of it. And so very light volume tomorrow. Um, I feel like we've really had some overextension in the marketplace the last few days. Uh, I feel like there's a little bit of a topping effect here. We pushed the Dow above 3,000, big psychological level. And regardless of whether the market continues to push higher or not, this is generally an area that we see a little bit of a rest coming into play. And so the, the nature of this is just a little bit skewed to the downside, a little bit bearish nature. Uh, but the point is that uh, this is a big trade, right? Not crazy deltas. Uh, a little tight, maybe, you could say, on the call side at a 14 delta, but the 10 delta on the put side I'm okay with. Uh, but if we look at this uh, trade, the numbers on it, again, $35,000 trade brought in $6,000 of premium, already showing a $1,500 profit on the trade. And uh, generally, you know, on these E-minis, I'm looking at a 60% probability trade, sometimes 55% probability trade, 71% probability on this trade. And unless the futures go haywire overnight here, um, I'm hoping to maybe get out of this trade at a $3,000 or so profit, somewhere close to a 10% rate of return uh, in, you know, maybe a 10-hour window, an 8-hour window. Uh, and it wouldn't be possible if, if you didn't trade the futures. And so uh, one of the comments that I get a lot in our live trading room is, man, I, I, I have a sub $25,000 account. I hate trading the futures. Guys, don't focus completely on the commissions. Yeah, they're important to, to be uh, aware of those, but we'll look at these. And, and I think, you know, I, I hope that this trade works out. I hope that this trade ends up being a profitable trade. Um, not just for the fact that I would like to make money on the trade, but it would be a great example to look at the trade and on the one hand, you're going to immediately say, oh, what a great profit. You know, you made thousands of dollars in a few hours time. What a wonderful profit. And then simultaneously, you're going to look at the commissions and just about throw up because the commissions are going to be ugly, right? But we have to juxtapose those against each other and the opportunity that it brings us. So we'll check back in here later in this trade. Uh, when we do finally get to an exit point, hopefully we get out at a nice profit and we can look at those comparisons of, yeah, you made some nice money, but boy, you paid a heavy price for that. Does that make sense at the end of the day? Okay, so this is another example here of sort of the progression as, as uh, how a credit trade can go from a loss to a worse loss before it hopefully goes into a profit zone. Uh, we're here at 7.37 a.m. now. Market has just opened up. The cash markets have just opened up. You can see that, uh, again, if we go back to our activity page, uh, last night around 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, is when we filled those positions that we were in. So 4 or 5 p.m. right in here, right? Right at the low. We've obviously creeped up th throughout the night here. We've creeped up a lot higher than that. We were down about uh, 10, 15 points, and now we're up 12 points uh, on the E-minis. And that is obviously being reflected right there. You can see that, again, uh, we're in our cash flow zone, uh, admittedly very close to the call leg, obviously. Uh, but we're showing down $5,000. Now, we still have uh, uh, almost $11,000 of extrinsic value. So this trade is still, quote unquote, quote unquote, fully profitable. Uh, in terms of if we were to expire right now at this very moment. But nevertheless, we're down five, $6,000 right now, right? And again, this is the nature of a credit trade. We'll obviously come back here at uh, a little bit later in the day and see how this is progressing. Okay, so it's about 10 a.m. It's 9.55 to be exact a.m. Mountain Time, uh, but it is a Friday after uh, Thanksgiving. And so it's a shortened trading session here. And so we really only have about one hour left in the trading day. We are going to close down the markets here at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, just about an hour left in the trading day. And you can see, once again, the move in the E-minis has not been favorable. We've got a negative delta here of 11, meaning we really needed this to go down. E-minis are, are still going up. They're not, as up. they're not up as much as they were, 
but we did need them to go down rather than up to get this a little bit more delta neutral. We can look at it here in the risk graph uh, and just see what it looks like here. Uh, you can see, obviously here, we are much closer to the call leg than we are the put leg. And uh, so we would really, we, we, this has gone the wrong way for us, right? This trade has gone the wrong way. Uh, and yet now we're showing uh, a profit. Now we're green to the tune of $3,000 plus dollars. Still about $2,300 of extrinsic value sitting in there right now. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this here. But again, just about an hour left to go in the close. Okay, so the market has closed here. It's uh, 11 o'clock uh, mountain time for that early close on the marketplace. Market's just settling out here, but I went ahead and I closed this out right down in here. You can see my activity for the day. Let's go to activity, yeah, history, history, that's what I'm looking for. So there's our trades. You can see uh, starting all the way last night, there's our first ones coming in at about 4.30 at night um, with the calls. And then we put in some puts later on. Uh, a lot of activity there. 38 rows of trades. Uh, but the end result for the day is uh, we booked about, uh, and here's what we were talking about, right? $5,100 profit almost $1,100 in commissions, right? Uh, $1,085 in commissions. I just want to see what that is. $1,085. So it's crazy, right? $1,085 in commissions minus my $5,120. Uh, guys, I still netted four grand for the day. I still netted $4,000 for the day. Now, Everybody has a different standard of living, but for me, four grand a day is plenty. I do not need to make more than that. And so again, it comes down to how you view things. Do you look at stuff through the, um, the, the law of abundance or the law of scarcity, right? What are you focusing on in this trade? Uh, there will be people that focus on the law of scarcity that say, I would never trade the futures. I would never trade the E-minis. There's no way that I'm going to go pay $1,000 a day in commissions, right? This is the focus right here is the commissions. Or you can say, uh, yeah, I would love, now again, no guarantees in life, right? But I would love the opportunity to make $4,000 net in a day. Just depends on how you look at it, guys. So again, conclusion, uh, are the E-minis expensive to trade? Oh, heck yes. <laughs> they are ridiculously <laughs> expensive to trade. Can it be worthwhile? Guys, I could not have done this trade. I could not have made $4,035 today trading the SPX. I needed that overnight action to be able to get the positioning to be able to do this type of a result. So, yeah, I I'm willing to pay the thousand bucks, okay? So again, just to keep that in mind uh, when you're trading the E-minis, are they expensive? Oh, heck yeah. They're expensive to trade. Uh, can they still be worthwhile? Well, of course they can. I think that proves the point.